Okay, so I'm really just doing some minor work here on Demon Spawn. Uh, it kind of got disassembled in the last bit of the tournament. In the Rumble specifically, it got pretty shredded by Melanistic Leopard and Dead End. One of the weird things that died on me was my weapon motor speed controller. It didn't look like it had any real physical damage to it, though I know it was sitting kind of outside the robot for most of the rumble. But basically at this point it won't get a signal, and I've repaired the original PWM connector cable. I put a new one on there, it still just won't take a signal, so I don't know if something more critical happened on the board that's keeping it from understanding that there's a signal there but basically i ended up just dropping a new one i had a spare so i put a new one here inside the robot and right now that's all that's wired up the drive is out of the system so i'm just going to give this a shot and see if it functions well that's interesting if i put it on channel one or two it recognizes that there's something there but when i put it into channel three not only does it not react... Oh wait, no, there it goes. Never mind. So I think part of the problem with this weapon assembly right now is that it's kind of become loose and wobbly, and I think part of the culprit to it is that the bearing is only really inside the disc, as opposed to the previous version of the robot where the bearing was, well there were two bearings inside because the disc was significantly wider. In this version it's you know just a quarter inch thick, and I think it's relying a little too heavily on the pulley itself to kind of balance everything out, and then you know the pressure of the motor is coming to the pulley too, so I think it's kind of pulling it out of whack constantly. So I'm going to try putting a bearing inside the pulley too, and see if that helps things out. <laughs> Well, it's a little worse for wear, but it has a hole in it. It's probably larger than what Fingertech would recommend putting in one of these pulleys, but uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. Man, I wish I had a bench vise when I was putting them in the discs, because uh, that makes pressing a bearing a lot easier. So just as a piece on its own, it feels a lot more stable, it's a lot less inclined to wobble. So let's put it on the robot and see if it's truly more stable. So the basic layout of the whole weapon assembly on Demon Spawn, of course, is this weapon and, uh, well, it's basically the finger tech pulley, the hubs that came off of the kit that I used with Sawin, the finger tech beater bar kit, and my custom blade. There are now two bearings going through, 5 16 bore, a half inch outer diameter. They have two bolts going through that actually hold the pulley onto the weapon. One of the things I added after Robot Battles this year, or last year, was this little UHMW circle. I think it was just made from scrap. Uh, it was like leftover off of a uh, whole saw cut. But it kind of fits in between the frame and the pulley there just in case these bolts heads were to kind of raise above they are countersunk in here but if they do raise up and gets loose that's when it kind of gouged into the side of my frame rail last time so that was the fix for that so unfortunately the way this is set up i have to kind of put it together in pieces so I kind of put the shaft part way through put on the spacer then the belt loops up onto the motor and then gets slid over the weapon and then the shaft can go through the weapon. And right now the spacer I'm using is this little 3D printed ABS piece. It's not ideal, but so far it's actually worked decently well. One of the plus sides is that it fits in between the bolts coming out on the opposite side of the, mo of the weapon assembly. So it kind of just helps hold things nicely together. So that all kind of gets pressed through, and then on the opposite side of everything, there's just another lock nut. 
that goes on. Nothing's really ever torqued down because it's tough enough that it doesn't really spin. Especially after I added this little self-writing bit that didn't really work. That actually keeps the bolt from spinning freely. Not that it really does on its own anyway, but that seems like a pretty solid setup. So let's clamp this down and see how it is. fraction of top speed and it does look like there is still some side to side wobble which I could probably knock out if I put in either some washers alongside the uh, spacer here or just made a new spacer. I think if I took out that side to side wobble it would spin pretty true and not make that awful sound. It does seem a little off balance which this has been through some hits so it could be just a little less than perfect but overall it seems decent. I definitely noticed a lot of flex in the robot frame that's why I didn't take it up much higher. At first I thought this plate here was kind of coming off, and it does have some flex to it, but it looks like the whole base plate is actually willing to flex as this thing powers up, which is kind of terrifying. So after the disaster that was the uh, floating wedge idea for Demon Spawn, I decided to use this kind of more solid wedge across the front. So it's going to sit kind of like this across the front of the robot. These triangles here in the corner are going to bend back to try to defend against horizontal spinners at least a little bit. Basically there's going to be an extra piece of UHMW bolted on the outside rails on either side and that's going to give the support for this new wedge. And then, like I said, those parts will bend back. There's the gap here in the center for the disc to go through. But now that I'm looking at this, I'm realizing that center hole is off center, so I may have to just play with the dimensions on that when I cut it out. But I've made two patterns of this. I'm going to make it out of one millimeter titanium first, but then I'm going to cover it up with some, uh, I think it's 0.09 inch Lexan, and that's just gonna kinda combine the two materials. I've done it before with Demon Spawn's front wedge, so I kind of had the Lexan to absorb some impact and the titanium just to be a strong backing to it. And I kind of like it just for the fact that it doesn't give off sparks, so it's a little less obvious that you have damage being done to you. <laughs> So I think anybody that uses little grinding wheels on a Dremel would either know or at least suspect that they're pretty useless against titanium. They just take forever and get worn down exceptionally fast. So it's time to step things up. <coughs> that right there is Demon Spawn with the new wedge mounted to the front. I think it looks pretty cool. I think it actually kind of gives it an intimidating look. Um, these corners I am intending to bend backwards, but I kind of like the, the way the plow looks straight on. So I guess we'll see if I even end up bending those back. I'm actually a little worried it's going to be a pain in the butt to do with titanium as well. So it could just be a really good excuse just to leave it looking like this. Like I said, there is going to be the Lexan layer over top of it, so that's actually why these aren't countersunk. It'll be countersunk into the Lexan. I have the mounting blocks on the outside. And yeah, now I just got to do the annoying part of measuring out how the bleed is going to sit. 
So it's going to be like that. So it's going to get cut pretty low there in the front, I think. So I'm going to have to play around with it a little bit and see how much really needs to come out of the wedge. So I bet somebody was watching that last segment thinking, hey, if you bend those wedges back, it's going to lift the front off the ground. And, well, you were right. So I unbent the angle. Uh, I actually have to adjust a little bit. I think I can go a little bit back, and that will basically make it flush against the ground. But this titanium piece isn't what's going to be scraping the ground anyway, so it really only matters if I get it right on the Lexan wedge. But that will go over top of this. I now have a clearance for the weapon. I decided to bring it all the way out to the edges of the UHMW mount, just in case I get hit by like a Project Terminus or something like that again, and the blade gets warped. If it was just narrow enough for the blade, I didn't want it hitting the wall and possibly jamming up. So this will give it a lot of room to get screwed up before it becomes an issue, or at least binds up against itself. So I decided to swap out the uh, standard Kitbots gear motors with the brushless adapted versions. I tried this probably about two years ago, or a year and a half ago, and the uh, pinions kept coming loose. I've since found, or honestly, I just saw Russ Barrow from Dark Forces posted some updates and better stuff to use to get the pinions to stick. I've tried that technique. I forgot to film it, but that's in here. So now the problem I'm running into is that I have the Outrunners in here, which is a spinning can, so it's going to potentially hit the wires. So I want to drill into either side of this center block here and just zip tie the wires there so that it holds it taut across the back panel. But now I've realized with the new wedge attachment, that means to get in here, to get the center section out, I actually have to undo the whole front wedge and then remove these front panels here because they're bolted in through the sides and through here and that will let me get to the center section and that's even after me not bolting it back in properly last time I was messing with it so it's a little bit to take apart just to get to the center section but hopefully it's something I'm not gonna have to do too often so the new drive works, but I encountered two different issues when I was testing it. One is that it seems to be bottoming out on one side. Basically the left side is just free spinning instead of making contact with the ground and moving the robot. So most likely it's just that the robot's resting on the right wheel and two other points. I took the wedge off to see if it made a difference. Actually I took the titanium piece off first and then I took the Lexan wedge off and with both of those I was still having the same problem. I did put smaller light flights on here just to quickly test because I couldn't find my normal wheels, so I'm going to put these back on and see if the added ground clearance helps any. And the other issue, which I'm going to address first actually, is that there is a loose wire somewhere in here. Every so often when I move things around, something just isn't making a connection and the robot doesn't work, which is definitely a problem. So I'm going to fix that one first. So there's a bit of playing with things. I'm not entirely sure where the source of the problem is yet. kind of seems at times like the wheel might just be spinning on the hub, or the hub might be spinning inside the wheel, causing it to not go. But it does have sometimes where it kind of free spins, which makes you think it's high-centered. Gears seem to be meshing okay, but I wouldn't rule out the possibility that the pinion is jacked up in some way and isn't meshing correctly with the rest of the gears. So I'm going to play with this some more. I think I'm going to start by dremeling down the edge of the wedge. Hey, that rhymed just to try to see if I can get a smoother transition and have the Lexan more on the floor. Even though without the wedge entirely, it still was jamming up some. And worst case scenario, I'll throw the old motors back in. I think if it is a dragging issue, it could just be that the brushless motors just don't have the startup torque, and that's causing them to kind of want to spin more instead of grabbing in and going like the other version did. And now I can't even remember if I tested the wedge with the brushed motors. So I guess the control test would be to put the brush motors in. I hadn't actually tested the wedge with those in here and see if that caused any issues. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and try to treat it as a ground clearance problem and see where that takes me. All right, so here's Demon Spawn, mostly complete. I've got his name scrawled across the front wedge. The wedge has been sharpened. It is the Lexan over titanium, as I showed before. I have... 3D printed some covers for those motors. Actually, if I lift it up a little bit, you could see best there on the right side of the screen. You could actually see the motor with the cutout around it so that the wires can pass through. But that basically just keeps my other wires from getting sucked into the outrunners, which was kind of being a problem. 
The wires are kind of zip tied in, but they're definitely a bit of a mess. I didn't really leave myself enough room. Demon Spawn wasn't designed originally for this battery. And for whatever reason, when I rebuilt it, I didn't add extra room to increase the size for that battery. I just kind of went with what I already had. So a lot of the wires are just really crammed in that back section to connect from the right side of the robot to the left side of the robot. But the robot is more or less how it's going to fight. So I just repainted the old top armor bright neon green again. The last demon spawn was significantly lacking in bright green. So got to bring that back in here. That paint on the front is supposed to be glow in the dark. I don't know if it will work, but we can find out. I don't know if it's showing up on camera at all, but it is kind of glowing a little bit. That's kind of cool. So despite the fact that the robot's not entirely done right now, this may be my last section of the video just because everything else I have to do, it's not really that exciting. Just fixing the wiring and then bolting the top armor down. Demon Spawn's more or less ready to go and... Curious to see how this new wedge design is going to work.